Hello lovely internet strangers. Today you're only going to be seeing my face tiny in the corner because I'm going to be showing you on screen an amazing article that we can enjoy together. This was not the next video that I planned to put up, but I had to do a video about this once I read it. It is time for a rant. Come along to Rant City. The pink transit tax. Women spend more than men to get around NYC. Oh! You don't say! Something that fits with the feminist narrative! There's mass discrimination against women to make them pay more for stuff. Much like shoe on head, I believe that the pink tax is complete bullshit. Women and men buy different products, and they cost different amounts of money. Women buy products with lots more ingredients in them. We pay for different razors. Try shaving your legs with your boyfriend's facial razor and see how that goes for you. Women in New York City spend an average $26 to $50 extra on transportation per month for safety reasons, and up to $100 each month if they are their family's main caregiver, as much as $1,200 more than men each year. Those are the numbers from a report released by researchers at New York University's Rudin Center for Transportation on the pink tax. Yes, thank you for putting in quotation marks because it's not a thing. Or gender-based price discrimination etched into the city's transportation system. Saying it's gender-based price discrimination is saying that there's people who are like, we make women pay more because they're women. That's not true. There can be a disparity, like with the wage gap, where Women choose different professions, they work less hours, they drop out of the workforce. So when you average everything together, yes, there is a gap between the total earnings, not wage, of men and women. And same thing here, it could be that there is a disparity in what men and women pay, but it's because women make different choices. And if that's your argument, women shouldn't have to make different choices, fine. But don't call it gender-based price discrimination. Like, oh, you're a lady? Your Metro card costs more. No, because it fucking doesn't. This project stemmed from looking at the hashtag MeToo movement, says Sarah Kaufman, associate professor with the Rudin Center who studies transportation technology and worked on that report. It got me thinking about the day-to-day -day issues that women face in major cities. Oh, did it. You never thought about that before? Living in the city, probably, for a while. It was just Me Too that got you thinking about these day-to-day -day issues. So the survey suggests that those experiences on public transit led to many women to make a different set of transportation choices from those made by men. Oh, exactly what I predicted it would be. 75% of female respondents said they had experienced harassment or theft on public transportation, compared with 47% of men. And they responded differently. 29% of women said they don't take public transportation late at night because of it, compared with 8% of male respondents. And they spent differently. 42% of women said they felt safest taking four hire vehicles like an Uber or Lyft, which is almost always more expensive than a transit ticket, late at night. Just 15% said they felt best on public transit. Women are worried about their safety. News at 11. As I said in my other video, which if you haven't seen, talks about rape culture and the precautions that women take and how much of a burden that that is or isn't. And the reality is sexual dimorphism. Men on average, physically stronger than women. Women have to worry about assault, generally sexual assault. That's just the facts of life. Basically they're saying statistically significant amount more women say that they change their behaviors based on fear for their safety because of their gender and it costs them more. Okay, even if I go with you on that and I'm like, okay, Yes, this is a thing that's happening. What should be done about it? Because what can be done about it? Basically, we can subsidize women. Oh, you're a lady. We give you a monthly extra budget, you know, from the New York City government. Let's take more of your tax dollars. Let's just take some of those. We're flushing them down the toilet anyway. We'll give them to you so you can have some extra money to take an Uber because you don't feel safe because you're a lady. I mean, it's either that or you just complain about it some more. What is the solution? Who the hell knows? Let's see if they get to it in this article. The cost burden falls even more heavily on people who take care of children. And research suggests that about three quarters of people doing that today are mothers. It is really hard to get around the city with children, even as an able-bodied person, particularly with multiple children, one survey respondent wrote. Try carrying a kid-filled stroller down the stairs at one of New York's 355 elevator-free subway stations, and you'll understand why many parents try to avoid mass transit. Yes, it's such a burden for you. Not for like the elderly or disabled that might need those elevators. No, you, the able-bodied parent who has to carry your kid's stroller down the stairs. Number one, every time I see someone walking down the stairs with a stroller, I always see someone running over to help them. And two, tough shit. 
You chose to live in New York City. There's a reason why when people decide to have kids, they often leave the city. Move to somewhere where you can drive around and you don't have to take public transit. If you move out of New York City, you will probably be saving yourself a buttload of money in lowered living costs because New York City is expensive as fuck. The majority of survey respondents who said they took frequent caregiver trips spent more than $76 extra on transportation each month. Yeah, it's no different if you're a caregiver living in not New York City. You still have to take more trips. You're just paying more in gas rather than paying more in public transportation costs. The report is based on responses from a web-based survey with 33 questions about day-to-day -day transit challenges. Just under 550 people responded to the questions, over half of them women. Under 550 people. This is a city of 8 million people. Even if we like cut that in half and we're like half of them are kids, we're talking in the few million people. You're talking about less than a fraction of a fraction of a percent of the population was surveyed. And as they note in their caveats, they didn't hit some key New York demographics. It's 93% had bachelor degrees or higher compared with 34.5% citywide. A disproportionate number lived on the Upper West Side. That indicates that the respondents had easier access to more expensive travel options like Uber rides or taxi trips and others in the city, meaning lower income women may simply not be able to afford to feel safe when they travel. It's not like taking an Uber necessarily makes you safer or like taking a taxi. You're getting in a car with a complete stranger at night who could totally assault you. You've lowered the amount of people who are gonna assault you to one and maybe you have a higher likelihood of getting away because you're in the back seat. No one's talking about the potential for assault getting into the Uber. That's something that I think about. Kaufman says that there's no reason to believe these same effects aren't happening in other places too, but that New York's may be amplified because so many residents depend on public transit. The most worrying question is this. I have yet to read one of these damn articles where it's actually a question where I'm like, yes, that is the worrying question. You are so spot on with that. So here's the worrying question, the most worrying question. What opportunities are women missing because they can't get around the city safely or cheaply? This is what I call moving the goalposts or hey, look over there at something that's completely unrelated to what we've just been talking about because they've just been talking about women's safety at night, that at night they make different choices. They spend more money on Uber and Lyft to avoid taking public transportation. And then we also were talking about how women on average are more likely to be the caregivers and caregivers have to spend more money because they have to take all these trips around the city. Then to ask what opportunities are women missing because they can't get around the city safely or cheaply as if men are paying a different price to get around the city. I mean, they're not, because it says nothing about getting around at night. I mean, what percentage of your life is getting around the city late at night? The population you surveyed, if they're like mostly Upper West Side, 76% white bachelor degree having women, they're probably not working class. They're not like working the night shift. It's usually because you're like out at the club or out at the bar or over at a significant other or a date's house. That's what we're talking about. Men have to pay the same prices if they are taking an Uber or Lyft or taking public transportation. The only difference is that they're just saying that women are more likely to take an Uber or a Lyft late at night. So what? The population you surveyed has more disposable income and is more likely to spend that disposable income on their safety because they can. When you have more money, you can spend it on stuff that people who have less money can't. That's how having more money works. But they spend more money on coffee and groceries and a whole bunch of other things. What opportunities are women missing? Opportunities to have more savings because they're not blowing it all on Ubers so they can go to that dude's house. We cannot say that labor force participation is completely entangled with sexual harassment on public spaces and transport, but the data and figures suggest we need to learn more about the correlation. I don't even know what that means. You're saying that women don't go get a job because they'd have to take public transport and they're afraid of getting sexually harassed. And so they don't participate in the labor force. They just choose to take unemployment because that would be better. I think that's what that's saying. If someone understands that differently than me and would like to explain it, please explain it to me. So this quote came from Carla Gonzalez Carvajal, who heads up the World Bank's Gender in Transport Projects. There's a gender in transport department at the World Bank. This is a thing that exists. The authors of this report point to a few possible solutions. Oh, interesting. They're gonna offer solutions because that's not usually a thing that happens. Let's see how effective these solutions seem. Number one, 
Make public transit feel safer by posting staff in highly visible places and training them to deal with harassment situations so women feel protected while they're waiting for transit. So you're just gonna like hire more people? I mean, there's already generally people around. So another one of their solutions is to get more women at the highest echelons of transit so the people running the system look more like the people riding it. Again with this overarching theme through all feminist nonsense that we have to get people who look like us to do shit. What are women gonna do differently when they run the MTA? You guys may not know, but the whole MTA, the funding for that is so fucking corrupt. Good luck trying to get the MTA transformed according to a feminist agenda. Women are just 39% of the transit workforce. Maybe because working for public transit is a shitty fucking job and women don't want to do it. I mean, they're just 39%, basically 40%, which means it's a 60-40 split versus a 50-50. It's not like 80-20, and only three of the 20 biggest American transit agencies have women at the helm. Oh, now we got to generalize out to all of the transit industry in America. We're just talking about a survey that you did in New York City. That is what the fucking article is about. If you have more lenses, through which your leadership team is looking at the service they experience, you will just by nature have a better level of customer service for your diverse base that comes from many different perspectives and uses the system in different ways. Well, this is like the feminist lens shit from Shoe On Head's patriarchy video. See the world through a feminist lens. You know, I always hear them say that saying, but I didn't know it was an actual literal thing. The Rudin team still has lots of research questions they'd like answered and they can spend more money on this useless line of inquiry. How do public transportation challenges differ for New York women of color or women in underserved neighborhoods? How about women in other cities? Are there technological solutions to these problems? Apps that might monitor their surroundings and make women more comfortable in public. I'm not even gonna get into this in detail, but people have tried all kinds of attempts to make these apps to like make women safer. I haven't seen any of them taken off in any major way. The last sentence of this article is amazing. Every New Yorker knows to mind the gap but it'd be nice if someone got around to closing this one. Mind the gap is a British thing. We gotta close the transportation gap between men and women. I basically died when I read that sentence and then came back to life. So I am speaking to you as someone who's been resurrected. When you're at the top of the article, there's this little link here where it says on the pink tax. So you click through to there. You would think it would link to the actual study, but no, it's just like their little write up of the study. Let's look at how they're presenting this information in this very misleading way. How often did they experience harassment? And let's remember, or theft is what they asked. Not sure, it's taken place over the course of my life and countless. They just give you the impression that this is representative of what most women said. And maybe it is, but you have these two quotes and they're just like, oh, this is what all the women said. Oh, we gotta have the women with the, the female symbol here just to hammer it home that caretakers are mostly women. Yeah, 81% of people who take 16 or more caretaker trips per month pay $75 or more. Yeah, because you take more trips and living in New York City is fucking expensive as fuck. Take it from someone who lives here. Then we go to the actual survey. Subtitle of this, women's challenges in mobility. That's not what mobility means. No, 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 ridiculous. Women report day-to-day -day experiences of harassment, catcalling, and general discomfort, much of it on transportation systems, affecting their sense of safety and self-worth. Citation needed, anecdotal. The term woman is inclusive of all female forms. All female forms. I haven't heard that one before actually, including cis, trans, and female presenting. This I found confusing. Like female identified I've seen, cause it's like you identify as female, but female presenting just means that you look female. So could that be like a trans man who looks female? because they get treated as a woman, so they might get harassed in the same way as women. I don't know, I don't know. The pink tax is a form of gender-based price discrimination, again with this bullshit. The extra amount women pay for certain products. You can buy normal shaving cream, you can buy normal things and nobody's stopping you, but if you want that silky shea butter goodness, you're gonna have to pay a little more. 
Most incidents occur during rush hour, 38%, when trains are crowded, as opposed to late night or off-peak hours. It's basically then just women's perception of it being less safe. At the beginning, they were like, oh, well, you know, women fear for their safety, so they're more likely to take a ride-sharing service, and then they end up spending more money than men. No woman is taking an Uber to work instead of the train because she doesn't feel like it's safe. Most respondents had trouble quantifying the exact number. So Several respondents shared the sentiment that reporting the incident would have no effect. The notion of reporting everyday harassment to the authorities is bizarre to me. What would they do? That is a good question. What would they do? What the hell would they do? Yeah, this guy groped me on the subway. I can't remember what he looked like, but he got off at the next stop. Put out an APB for this guy that I can vaguely describe because he squeezed my waist or put his hand on my butt. Most respondents, that includes men and women, feel safest using four hire vehicles. So it's not that men feel safer on public transportation, but they're just not making different choices based on that perceived safety or lack thereof. And this is the most interesting insight. It says, however, more frequent subway users, that would be me, are more likely to feel safe on public transportation late at night. Yeah, maybe because they had taken enough and they realize that generally nothing's gonna happen to you. Approximately 13% of female respondents said they dress differently, and 29% do not take public transportation late at night as a result of a perceived safety threat. Oh, I'm sorry that you have to dress less slutty because you're afraid of getting harassed on the subway. And I say this as someone who dresses slutty sometimes, okay? Look, I go out dancing. If I'm wearing a crop top and leggings, I throw on a hoodie before I leave the apartment, and then I take off the hoodie when I get to the dance venue. And then when I leave the dance venue, I put the hoodie back on. So when I'm walking on the street late at night, dudes aren't just seeing my bare midriff. I'm just wearing a baggy hoodie, nothing to see here, move along. Who cares? I'm not trying to pick up dudes off the street. Like I don't need my crop top visible. I'm not like psychologically damaged by like putting on a hoodie. Of men, 8% do not take public transportation late at night for the same reason. But then over here, the median extra cost per month for men due to safety reasons is $0. The median, in case you're not familiar, in statistics means the middle point of the range. And if the middle is a range, then you average that and that is the median. It's not a zero number. 8% said they don't take public transportation late at night for the same reason, which means that they're then presumably taking these ride sharing services, which they have to pay for. So they have some increased extra cost per month due to safety reasons. Some men do. Maybe it's so low that it rounds down to zero, but the average person will read this and be like, men don't ever have to pay more. They aren't paying for these ride sharing services ever. On the other hand, the median extra cost per month for women is 26 to $50. Number one, the median is not a range. Also, something that's not being talked about here with the caregiver thing in particular, if you take more trips, you have to pay more money and you're gonna be paying more money whether you live in the city or if you live in the suburbs as compared to people who are not caretakers. And they're trying to make this out to be like a women's issue because women are more likely to be caretakers, even though it's an issue of caretakers, it's just a problem that disproportionately affects women. But it doesn't mean that this is a problem that all women have, just the women who decide to be caregivers in New York City, you can decide to not do that. You can move. People do it all the time. Women caregivers can reach up to $100 per month in addition to regular travel expenses. Okay, are they all single mothers? Because if they're not, then it's not like women are getting charged more. Families are getting charged more because if the women have husbands, or at least a father that they're co-parenting with, then the father is gonna be covering those transportation costs, at least to some extent. Now, if they're single mothers, that's a different issue. We're talking about this survey data, even though they acknowledge at the end, oh, well, we need to do another survey and get a more diverse you know, population. Okay, yeah, but your current population is college-educated, white women, a large percentage of which live in the Upper West Side. And I guarantee you that most of them that are caretakers have a man in their lives. So it's not really like, on women it's per household which have men and men pay for it so men have that expense they're not like getting away scot-free you have to compare you know single men and single women to the men who are married and women who are married you're not comparing like to like and you're not factoring in who's covering those costs. And then at the end, they have these recommendations from this discussion panel that they held. Leadership, 
Women should lead transit station and safety systems to build in safety from the start. What are you going to do to make it safer? I would love to see women who think that they can make public transportation in New York City safer. Build in safety from the start. What start? The subway system has already been built. It's old as fuck. So you're not building in anything from the start. And the money is barely there for the shit that needs to get done, like all these repairs, because they keep blowing it on garbage. And there's nothing you could do about it because idiots keep voting in the same administration that's been wasting their money for years. I had to rant about this article and show you how ridiculous this whole thing is as someone who actually lives in New York City, who also semi fits the profile of being a bachelor degree having white lady. Although I'm only white passing because let's not forget that I'm Latina. Gotta get those oppression points in there. Thank you for watching. If you weren't aware of the pink tax nonsense, then now you are. And you should definitely go watch Shoe on Head's video on the pink tax, which I will link below. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more content, please subscribe. I hope to have more content for you very soon.